Welcome to this AB Helicopters training video covering exercise 10, basic order rotations. The aim of this lesson is to enter and control the helicopter in order to take to flight at a given airspeed to control the rotor RPM and use the correct technique to recover and climb away. Firstly, some airmanship points. Before the exercise should be started, a hazel check should be carried out. More on this shortly. The wind velocity should be known, as should the rotor and the engine RPM limits of the given helicopter. Finally, the performance and the height of void curve should be reviewed before commencing this operation. The hazel check is an important safety precaution that should be carried out before conducting the manoeuvre. Firstly, is the height suitable for the manoeuvre and is the recovery altitude specified? Next, is the area that the manoeuvre is carried out suitable in the event of an engine failure? Next, security. Are there any loose articles in the cockpit that could impede on the flight controls? Are all the seat belts installed and tight? Check that the engine temperatures and pressures are in the green. And if using a Robinson 22 or Robinson 44 with a carbureted engine, for example the Raven 1 or Astra helicopter, first apply full carb heat at least 10 to 20 seconds before commencing auto rotation. And finally, look out. Look out behind and below. The aircraft can be descending at a high rate of descent. You want to make sure that the area around the helicopter is clear. I suggest a 45 degree clearing turn to the left and then to the right, or indeed a full 360 degree turn. For this basic auto rotation, the R44 should be flown at approximately 70 knots, whilst the R22 should be held slightly slower, about 65 knots. However, both aircraft, the pilot should aim to keep the rotor RPM at 100%. The exercise should be set up with the aircraft approximately 2,000 feet above the surface of the Earth, travelling about 90 knots for the 44, or perhaps 70 knots for the 22. Once the hazel check has been completed, the pilot can enter the auto rotation. The entry procedure is as follows. Firstly, lower the collective, hold the nose up with aft cyclic, and don't forget to apply right pedal to balance the helicopter. Once the collective is fully down, the throttle can be rolled off and the aircraft will now be in auto rotation. Note, on the 22 and the 44, there is a slight buzzing noise from the overriding sprag clutch when the aircraft is in auto rotation, which is a key sign of when the throttle can be rolled off. Then check the RPM to maintain 100% uh, rotor RPM and maintain 70 knots in the 44 or 65 in the 22. During the descent, take a note of the rate of descent, which should be somewhere between 1600 and 2000 feet per minute. Have a look at the angle descent and the distance covered, which changes on a daily basis depending on the wind strength, the weight of the helicopter and the persons on board. Take a note of the rate of descent, which should be somewhere between 1600 and 2000 feet per minute. Have a look at the angle of descent and the distance covered, which changes on a daily basis depending on the wind strength, the weight of the helicopter and the persons on board. At this stage of the training, a power go around will be performed. First thing to do is to roll on the throttle. Above 80%, the governor will catch the RPM and cause the engine RPM to rise to 101%. Next, start to apply power, raising to max continuous power. Simultaneously, make sure that the aircraft attitude is maintained in a speed stable attitude holding approximately 65 knots. We will now cover some of the limitations and considerations to be aware of when conducting this manoeuvre. First of all, the RPM limits of the helicopter and the Robinson series. This ranges from 110% to 90% with the engine off. We'll now look at how to control that RPM. So, firstly, you can use the collective. If you lower the collective, the pitch on the blades reduces, which causes a corresponding reduction in the angle of attack. The drag reduces, and that allows the RPM to increase. Conversely, as the collective is raised, this pulls the RPM down. The pitch of the blade is increased, the angle of attack increases, and the drag increases. Another way of adjusting the rotor RPM and auto rotation is through changing the disc loading. So, disc loading is the total weight of the helicopter divided by the rotor disc area. Whilst the rotor disc area is fixed during flight, the weight of the helicopter can change. Weight is a function of the mass times by the acceleration or g-force. So by pitching up the helicopter, we can increase the g-force and by putting the nose down, by pitching down, we can reduce the g-force. Now, this has an effect on the overall RPM. 
by loading up the rotor disk, i.e. by pulling those up, that can cause the rotor RPM to increase, and by offloading the rotor disk by pitching down, that reduces the RPM. The airspeed of the helicopter can also be used to adjust the RPM. By speeding up, increasing the airspeed, this will also cause the RPM to rise. Likewise, by slowing down the helicopter, the RPM will decrease. There is a limit to this though, however, and the pilot operating handbook puts the maximum airspeed during an auto rotation at 100 knots in the R44 and 102 knots in the R22 helicopter. On the 44, this is marked by a barber pole on the airspeed indicator. Finally, we'll have a look at the effects of turns during auto rotation on the RPM. In a similar manner to disc loading, if you roll into a turn, the RPM will increase, and as you roll out of the turn, the RPM will decrease. Now, the amount that the RPM increases is proportional to however tight you make the turn. In practice, however, it requires the pilot to raise the collective as they roll into the turn and to lower the collective as they roll out. The following footage is from a practice of rotation. The lever is lowered, the nose is held aft, and right pedal is used to maintain balance. The aircraft is now in rotation and the engine RPM is now at idle. However, the rotor RPM is being maintained. Briefly, the rotor RPM horn was heard and the lever was lowered to contain the RPM at 100%. Helicopter is now just being flowed towards a clear area. Note the rate of descent in the upper left hand side of the console. The aircraft is being held at 70 to 75 knots. Approaching 1,000 feet above the ground, a power go around will be conducted. The first thing to do will be to roll on the throttle, and above 80%, the governor will match the RPM. Now that the RPM is matched at 100%, power is being added. It's currently at 20 inches, and those being raised for go around. We'll now have a quick review of some basic auto rotation theory. Below is a diagram looking at the simplified forces acting on the helicopter in flight and in auto rotation. So first of all, in powered flight, in simplified terms, the lift is equal to the helicopter weight and the drag of the blade and the airframe is countered by the engine torque. Now, if we look at this, the blade element itself, key features of note are that because of the relative airflow angle, the lift induced drag is acting to slow the rotor, i.e. it's acting behind the axis of rotation and the lift is incanted to the rear. However, in autorotative flight, the lift is still equal to the helicopter weight. The drag is still present, but it's counteracted by what we call the autorotative force. This is due to the same forces which act on a sycamore leaf as it falls from a tree. The airflow comes from beneath the helicopter, so the lift force is now angled forward of the axis of rotation. This overcomes the profile drag of the blade and keeps the blades driving forward. As part of the air exercise, your instructor will demonstrate an auto rotation to the ground, which is also known as a simulated engine off landing. This will be done overhead an airfield. It's very similar to the practice auto rotations uh, as described earlier on in this lesson. We will also look at the variable flare technique. So the auto rotation is entered and the RPM is maintained. However, instead of doing a power go around towards 50 feet above the airfield, a variable flare is commenced. The following footage shows this in more detail. The auto rotation is set up with the aircraft approximately 750 feet above the airfield. As it turns on to final approach, the auto rotation is entered with the lever being progressively lowered. Once the lever is down, the throttle is rolled to idle, as confirmed by looking at the tachometer needle split at the top right. Uh, the aircraft is now descending about 70 to 75 knots towards the airfield, with a greater descent about 16, 1700 feet per minute. As we approach approximately 50 feet above the airfield, the nose will start to rise as we progressively flare. A bit of half cyclic click and the airspeed bleeds off. The flare then tightens, careful to make sure that you don't strike the tail on the ground, level the helicopter, keeping it straight with the pedals and raise the collective to cushion the landing. To summarize, for this exercise, before entering auto rotation, always perform a hazel check. Then, lower the collective, right pedal, aft cyclic. Control the rotor RPM by using the collective, aircraft speed and the disc loading. The notes in this video do not supersede the aircraft flight manual. Always seek formal instruction with a qualified instructor. 